So when I was 22, I had a regular checkup at my childhood doctor. And that was when I was first diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which for those who don't know, it's an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid gland. But all you well be listeners probably already know that. Um, At the time, I really didn't know much about health in general and certainly didn't know what an autoimmune disease even was, what a thyroid was. And my doctor, as amazing as it is that she diagnosed me, didn't explain those things. She basically said, here's a pill. It's a synthetic form of thyroid hormone and you know it's totally manageable you'll just have to be on it for the rest of your life and this was synthroid this is synthroid exactly and she was sort of a a functional or she was totally conventional doctor okay so she was not a functional medicine doctor. She was cause she, a little bit more holistic than I'd say your average doctor. But, you know, we didn't talk that much about like lifestyle and diet. And so I think because I grew up in a household that was a little bit more organically minded and my mom was really into homeopathy as you know since we're childhood friends and the little white balls that dissolved under your tongue um and I think just like her being in the back of my mind I was like oh being on medication for the rest of my life no thanks and I wasn't really feeling any symptoms yet or so I thought because it wasn't really explained to me what the symptoms were I just knew that one of the main symptoms that they always look for is weight gain and I was losing weight and I she explained that it was probably because my thyroid was like swinging from one side of the pendulum to the other it was like running too fast um anyway the whole conversation's a blur and then moral of the story is I pretended like it never happened um, and went on living my life uh, as a 22 year old (laughs) and then I kind of the way I talk about it in my book The Wellness Project is like I slowly kind of descended from Health Mountain and started to experience these weird strange array of symptoms Um, one of the main ones that was the most debilitating was, you know, my digestion. I basically was in the fetal position after every time I ate. And I was a chef and food writer. I just quit my corporate job and was trying to make it in the industry. And so that was, you know, not optimal. But at the same time, I was really scared, you know, at least being able to connect some dots for like diet and how I was feeling. I was like, I'm probably allergic to something I'm eating, but like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like darn guess I'll just never know. What yeah. That is. I was like, I don't want to be a food writer with like food allergies either. So, um, eventually I made it to, you know, a doctor who was more holistic and functional and did a bunch of tests and put me on elimination diet, discovered that gluten was a real issue. Even he, though, didn't explain the connection between Hashimoto's and gluten to me. Um, I had to learn that later for myself. But um, kind of once I crossed the threshold and like went down the rabbit hole of exploring holistic medicine, I kind of found myself incredibly overwhelmed by all the conflicting opinions and not just the opinions but just like the laundry list of things I had to do and so it was kind of like the pendulum swung from denial to the other side which wasn't like obsession for someone like me but certainly like the amount of mental energy and the amount of money I was spending it just felt like being healthy was a full-time job so I kind of somewhere in there came up with this idea to take a step back and to dedicate a year to slowly making over my health one change at a time. And the idea wasn't necessarily to be my healthiest self even, like obviously I wanted to feel good when I woke up in the morning, but the question was like, which of all of these things that people are talking about is actually worth my time, money, and energy? 